Good morning, and welcome back to the basement. You know, when I was a kid, we had a Franklin stove in our basement that we often, during the winter time, would keep a fire going in to keep that area of the basement warm. And I remember we had these popular mechanics home handyman encyclopedias. I still have those, and they still mean a lot to me. But one of the things it talked about was forging. You can forge things at home. So one of the times that the fire was going, I found some random piece of steel and I stuck it in the bottom of that Franklin wood stove and got it red hot and beat it on the concrete to flatten it out. It wasn't a work of art, but I did get to get the steel red hot and I did get to see how the steel behaves when it's been softened up. And ever since I've been an adult, I've kind of wanted to return to that experience. I wanted to try my hand at forging. But just the other day, I had stopped at Harbor Freight and picked up a two pound hand sledge, thinking that it's probably about right for some basic forging. And when I went and looked on the internet to see anything I would need to do to this hammer to get it ready for forging, I was surprised to find a video by Alex Steele where he took exactly one of these hammers and kind of retrofitted it for use for forging. And I decided basically to repeat what Alec had done. However, there is a little bit of a problem. This two pound sledge is about the right weight as it is, but if you take any material off, of course, you're getting down under two pounds. And I'm a little concerned that you're getting too light. And the diameter of these faces is not very substantial. So what I would rather have is a hammer that is purpose made for forging. Rounded on one end, flat on the other. And you can go out and buy them for give or take a hundred bucks. But I was digging around in my drawer for a whole other reason, but I came across this. I don't know where I picked this up. I might have gotten it out of the garbage. I might have paid 50 cents for it at a yard sale or something. I'm really not sure. But this is a three pound head <clears throat> and it's a larger basic diameter than the two. And I decided, what if I took this three pound hammer head and tried to work it into something approximating this. And as I'm cutting away relief and as I'm removing excess material, the head will come down to the two pound vicinity. And then of course you need a hammer handle. I dug around in the drawer, I have this perfectly nice hammer handle. Uh, it was much too skinny at the top. So yesterday, I planed this flat and glued a couple pieces of oak on here overnight and they are all ready to go. How well is that handle going to hold up with a glued piece of oak onto it? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. So anyway, that's the plan. Turn this hammerhead into something that looks like this. And since the handle is not in it, we can use the lathe, we can use the mill. We have much more tools to sculpt this into what we want it to be. And then we will put it on the handle. So, so the first step is to get it centered in the chuck. And to do that, I have the indicator set up and I'm just going to center these two faces together and these two faces together. Tightening the high spots and loosening the low spots. I think I need okay now. Snug all the way around. There we go. So the truth is is I don't really know how hard the steel in a hammer head like this is. But even an inexpensive carbide will generally cut a fairly hard steel. So all we can do is see how it goes. My goal here is to make this kind of a round tapered journal just like the one in the picture. Okay so we are cleaned up uh, left and right. We're still working on top and bottom. And I believe we're going to call that good. So now the question is, 
How do we round over this face? Okay, so what I've decided to do is I have set my compound to about five degrees. And the first thing, the, the part is not even faced, so the first thing I'll do is face the part. Then I'm going to use the compound sliding in and out with the compound to make a facing cut. So that will put a five degree chamfer. Then I'll give it a 10 degree and a little bit farther out from the center, give it a 10 degree chamfer, 15, 20. And over the course of five or six or seven operations, it will get more and more rounded over. Okay, so here it is after the five and 10 degree passes. You can see we're just beginning to get a convex on there. You know, I'm not an experienced blacksmith, so I'm not sure exactly what form I'm shooting for. But it seems like that form ought to work. I think what I will do next, I'll put a flap disc in the grinder. I'll cover the ways with a cloth so I don't get grit on them. And I will polish it with a flap disc while the lathe is spinning. And there it is after polishing with a 60 grit flap disc and this gray scotch bright wheel i'm pretty pleased with it i mean there again i'm not certain exactly what form it ought to have but that is clearly a rounding form and fairly smooth and polished so that it's not going to leave marks in the work all right so, so here it is after i just took that same carbide cutting bit and kind of, uh, you know, came in here, did a plunge cut, V'd this out, and then went back with the flap disc and the scotch Bright wheel and kind of cleaned it up, kind of polished it up. So this end is completed. So for the other, other end of the hammer, really all I want to do is face it off square and flat. I want to shorten it up to try to remove some weight so I'll kind of shoot for this place where it's stamped three pounds so I'll be taking off a quarter or three-eighths of an inch and then I think I will do the same groove over here although the groove over here will be skinnier and perhaps a little deeper I'm gonna try this uh, triangular ceramic insert we'll see if it cuts any better and holds up any better than the carbide that I was just sharpening by hand. So we got another quarter inch to go. I'll just bring you back once I get there. Okay, there it is. There we've got just what have we got? A sixteenth of an inch before the stamp. I don't want to actually cringe on the stamp because I want the full size of the face for flatness. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. I will soften these edges up with the flap disc, just so it's not a, a literally sharp edge. But meanwhile, I'm going to scoot this thing over and see about plunging in and making a groove there.
There's the head. Now, let's see what we can do about this handle. So we're going to be, be turning this handle in the lathe to get the round part, try to make it nice and clean. First thing we'll do is we'll turn using this straight up center that will give it a completely round profile. Then, because we want an oval shape, so I've drilled these holes a hundred thousandths away from center and we'll use those as the centering point and when we turn over here it will give us the oval that's narrow to this side and when we put the center point here it will give us the oval to this side and that will give it the oval shape profile that we're looking for. All right, All right so this is currently 1.120 it's going down to 0.830 so we're gonna take off 0.144 off of each side. So I have it mounted to take off one side. I will come into a skim cut, feed the compound in by 0.144. Then I will reset, offset the handle to the other end point out here, and then repeat. Now we will reset to do the opposite side. That seems about right. This rasp. And I, I'm just fitting it up there and kind of feeling and looking. Of course, I have the wooden inserts. These are just made of oak. You know, different people sell inserts for a vise. These are just a piece of oak that I cut this big rabbit into and screwed in a couple of magnets that I ordered off of eBay. And it just gives the, the face of the jaws that effectively become a piece of oak. the next thing is to saw a slot here that we'll use to drive our hardwood wedge into. Alright, so I now have it, have it fitting up in the handle well enough. The final thing is I want to give it some facets here. I don't want a round handle. I want it to be basically an octagon shaped handle, at least, at least the outer perimeter parts. So I'm going to go ahead and take it to the belt sander and just sand some flat facets onto it. So there's the basic faceted profile that I want for the handle. I'll take some sandpaper strip and zing off this remaining varnish. So there it is, ready to be fitted in. All the varnish is off of it. The handle's been faceted in the, in the grip area. So I'm feeling good about that. Take a wooden or a leather mallet. Strike the end of the handle. And it drives it right up in there. Alright, so there, there it is. Fit it up nice and clean. Left some nice stick out at the top. I will trim that almost but not quite flush. But that is of course after we drive our hardwood wedge in there. And then I'll make a hardwood wedge. I think I'll use oak. Something even harder than oak would be better, but I don't think I have anything harder than oak, so oak is what it's going to be. And there we have our wedge. So, drove the wedge in tight. Actually gave us a kind of a nifty uh, oak tiger stripe thing going here. We have the native handle and then the oak on the inside and the outside. Completely by accident, but kind of nifty. Now I'll drive a single steel wedge crossways into here, which will lock everything together and push the fibers this way as well. Okay. 
And finally, we'll seal it up with a coat of boiled linseed oil. Get down all in those fibers. Seal the pores up. Preserve the wood. Make it pleasant on the hands. And there you have it. A yard sale sourced hammerhead has become what I'd like to think is an heirloom tool that will be useful to whoever owns it, hopefully for the next hundred years. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, thanks for watching.